Well, all new tonight, a message of finding your voice and sharing your story, even in what has been such a dark year for so many of us because of the pandemic. Sally Lou Loveman, you see her right there, is an author who learned a lot, to say the least, during her many years working for the one and only Oprah Winfrey. Only on News Nation tonight, she shares her story and talks about finding your purpose in life by simply speaking up. Sally Lou Loveman's taken on the world's biggest stages in Sydney, Australia, New York Central Park, and the famed Harpo Studio here in Chicago. I had this opportunity to be in the front row of all these incredible stories that were told on the Oprah Winfrey show. So story really mattered to me. You are the real PR for our show. Wouldn't you not say these are the people that you speak well, to? These are the people that you are the first line for people's real um, engagement with anybody or anything to do with the Oprah Winfrey Show. Lovin says her long love affair with TV began four decades ago, courtesy of her mom, who got her tickets to the Mike Douglas Show. And as soon as I got in that studio, I was like, okay, I am home. I saw this girl, this woman, I should say, on the set with a clipboard. Uh, and I was like, okay, whatever. You know, she was wearing the headset, so she was cool. She was carrying the clipboard, which made her official. And she was so busy. And she was a woman, because it was 1976. So for me, I'm like, what is this? And that moment at 14 really just set me up for what would be... Um, you know, a 36 year career in doing something that I loved every single day. So I, I always say, say yes to invitations from anyone who loves or likes you, especially your mother. Uh, for me, it changed the trajectory of my life, and I'm, I'm so grateful. And for folks who don't know kind of the inside baseball of, and mechanics of TV, explain what an audience producer does and what you did specifically on the Oprah show for a number of years because you had to warm up that audience and kind of be the lead in act for Oprah. Yeah, yeah. Well, she sure didn't need a lead in act, but I guess you could call me the, the, the lead in act. I have a feeling that today is your day. job was sort of like an after thing because most shows most television shows with live audiences has a warm-up act but that is separate from an audience producer but i did both and really the thing that i loved the most was the warm-up uh as the audience producer i was in charge of tickets for the oprah winfrey show i mean could you get a better job right and a question i know you've been asked many times before what is it like to work with Oprah at the height of success in television. Well, I think what's cool from my perspective is that I started in 1987, and I actually interviewed with her in 1986 when the show went national. So maybe she's a billionaire now, but there's no change. She still rocks my soul, rocked my soul every time she spoke. She is the same person that I met in 1987 as she is today. So I think that's pretty cool because so many people uh, who ride that journey of fame can't can't say that, and that, that's her appeal. When Oprah's long-running talk show ended, Loveman admits to opening a tough chapter in her up-to-then very glamorous life. I remember as the show was ending, we were in our final season, and I was in the little kitchen cafe, and Oprah came in, and we kind of passed each other. And she said to me, you know, how are you feeling? And I said, you know, I'm not even sure people will even like me when the show ends. And I wasn't being dramatic. I was really serious. And, you know, I've always I've lived a life of being liked. I, I, I've always been a very affable, kind person, and I've had a lot of friends and people like me, but people really liked me when I was at the Oprah Winfrey <laughs> show. So how do you pivot from all of that to no regular work? I really have struggled over the years thinking like, wow, this is this is really hard. The phone doesn't ring like it used to, and I can't make a phone call and people just answer it. And without the brand, who am I? When you're Sally Lou Loveman, you take stock. It was a beautiful moment in television and in time, and it was the right time with the right human and the right everything. And write a memoir titled Speak. It is my speak book lunch party. And fill seats as an inspirational speaker, preaching the art and the necessity of storytelling. I just believe 
believe that stories connect us. They're our superpower. They are what um, make us realize we're more alike than we are unalike. Right now, we are in a, a, a period of time where we feel like we don't have control over much. And um, actually, we have control over nothing. <laughs> and so if we can control our story, not to say we can control our future, but we are the owners of our story. And uh, we need that connection more than ever. As Loveman's next chapter takes flight and she emboldens her audience to tell their story, her famous former boss is never far from her mind. She has made a career out of being who she is and being herself and uh, I think that's that's the best gift anyone can be. One of the great quotes that was on our wall at Harpo that she introduced me to, uh, she introduced us all to it and to me it's one of my favorite quotes, is the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are, Joseph Campbell. So it was really, it was really that was who she, that was her show. She was great to talk to. Yeah. We had a lot, we had a lot of fun. I think her message is fairly simple. You don't have to be Oprah, be on TV or whatever. It's it's in your own house with your own family, with your colleagues at work, sharing your story. I think finding your voice and being comfortable in that uh, in, in in who you are and in in what your life's about. And I think that's kind of the, the beauty, beautiful simplicity of her message. Yeah. Oh, All right. The owner of your story. Exactly. Write that one down. That's I asked her for a free car after the interview. <laughs> <laughs> you get no a luck. car and you get a car. <laughs> no luck on that. All right. <laughs>